Hello everybody, it's another installation series. How you doing? And this time around, we are in the city of Abuja. That's right, we're in a place called Durumi in Abuja. Don't forget, we are very close to the Asso Rock. This is the seat of power, everybody. And here is where we're working. It's such a beautiful place. And these guys are saying, we want power to be constant here. And you guys know that the very best ornaments that you can give to a beautiful house like this is to give it uninterrupted 24 hours power. And the couples who own this property said, we are a huge fan of your work and we'll love you to do this installation for us. And all I can say is, it's a pleasure and thanks for your support. Now it's time for me to pay back and give you the very best. And when we're involved, we give you the very best. Come guys, let, let me show you. So this would be a good place to start from. These are the solar panels that we intend to use right here. There are 29 pieces in number, fellows. These are JA Solar and they are 590 watts. I'm loving them because they're very good solar panels, all right? So each of them, 590 watts. And we have this in 29 pieces. Okay, so that's a whole lot of kilowatts coming from the PVs all the way down to the system. So we're expecting a real incredible energy power play. Check it out. All right, so this is the fun side of the situation. So let's unpack the cartons and see what we have on the inside. So let's unbox right now. <laughs> so this is what the batteries look like. Is 5.3 kilowatts, it's a Waco battery. This battery has a 10 years warranty. It's promised to have 8,000 cycles and you have the ability to charge this battery in just 30 minutes. All right, so let's unbox the day inverter. It's a 12 kilowatt inverter. It's a three phase inverter. So it's going to be charged with the responsibility of having to charge these six batteries. And I'm sure it's gonna do a good job. So it has an output of 250 amps. So the first thing you're gonna see right here is the mounting plate. So this is meant to be on the wall, then the inverter would hook right onto it. This is ensure solidity, cause it's gonna be a real disaster if you have your inverter on the wall and you go to work and come back and it's lying on the floor. <laughs> so these are the current transformers because it's a three phase system. So it comes with three current transformers to be able to monitor the current on the three phases, all right? So what next, it comes with a communication cable. Don't forget it, it's meant to be in there. If it's not, something is wrong. So these are the temperature sensors that comes with it, but this is essentially for wet cell batteries or lead acid batteries. We don't need it for lithium connections. All right, so let's go in all the way. Manuals to show you exactly what you're doing. If you're a rookie, you need to understand your way around the 12 kilowatt day inverter. So this is what it looks like, fellows. All right, so it's an IP65. There we go. All right, so they say that a journey of a million miles starts with one step. So this is the very first attempt at an installation right here today on the wall. So we're just finishing up with tightening it. This has to be firmly on the wall, deeply seated like it has, like it is right now. So put in all the bolts, ensure. Then you give it a very strong shake to ensure that everything is, cause it's gonna be carrying a very heavy load. So if this thing drops on the floor, the manufacturers of these products will not guarantee replacement because that voids the warranty because the warranty does not include physical damage on the system. So you have to be very careful when you're doing the installation. All right, so we've already done the pump, so that's hooked right now. So it's um, firmly in place, so it looks good. So 
so this is the last of the solar panels that we are checking because we try to check every single one of them before we take it up to the roof to ensure that there's no factory error because sometimes you can encounter factory errors of the solar panels and that's what the warranty is meant for so if you encounter any factory error on the solar panels then you can call on the manufacturers and they will change it for you all right so we ensure that we test everything because this ensures that all the connections that you have on the roof is very very good because if you have a defective solar panel it is definitely going to affect the entire output of the solar panels that are connected in that particular string and all of that so this is no longer weather compliant it is meant to be weather compliant if it is raining the glass is supposed to ensure that water doesn't seep in into the cells of the solar panel and this in the long run is going to affect the output of the entire solar panels that we connected this must have happened when it was being loaded into the car to be brought to the site so you can see here if you look here there's a crack so if you install it this way once it rains water will seep in and then destroy the cells so there's actually no need to test it because we wanted to test the voltage range and of course the current range to ensure that open circuit voltage is coming through and of course the current as well is also coming through so we'll definitely have to discard this all right so in case you're wondering what's going on right now um we're done with the output connection that is coming from this system. Don't forget, it's a three-phase system. All right, so we're about to connect the in from the grid. So the in from the grid is gonna go on here. Uh, so we have all of that going on at the same time. Then we're also gonna connect this guy. This is the cable for the um, current transformers. It's gonna be connected in here. So in here is where you need to connect your current transformers that it's gonna monitor the current that is coming into the system. That's the function because you can have a spike in the current and it could get to hurt or damage the system. So the current transformer sensors ensure that that doesn't get to happen. All right, so this is what it looks like. So we have three here. So in case you're wondering why we have three current transformers here, it's because it's a three-phase system. So if you're having a three-phase system, then most definitely you're gonna have three lines coming from the grid. Of course, you guys are familiar with the blue, red, and yellow lines all are gonna come in here so you would have this clamped to it and always make sure that you face the arrow side so always make sure that when you're connecting the current transformer there's an arrow sign here so you have the arrow sign here and the arrow sign is going to be pointed towards the direction where the grid is coming from so um, this is going to be clamped on the grid that is coming in to ensure that if you have spike in current if it's way too high or if it's inconsistent in terms of fluctuations it doesn't get to go into this that's what it is so it's more like a multi-layered protection for the system and that's what i love about day they have multiple protections including overload circuit breaker that shuts off if the system senses that it's been overloaded so we also have the output so if you look at this guy, so this is the output that is coming from the inverter. So if we shut this down, then the entire power that you have in the building is gonna go right out. Then this also ensures that um, you have communication between the grid and the inverter. So if this is pulled down, then you're not gonna have any power going into the grid. If it's turned up, then you have grid flowing into the system. Then you have the boss bars in place, and of course, all the surge protectors, the MCB, the MCCBs, everything the circuit breakers are in place we're about to start um, arranging the batteries the way it's going to be so we're going to allow the batteries to stand on its feet is an option so we're going to line it up this way here so down here the batteries gotta stand here so you pretty much um, slide this down and then you tighten it you make it as tight as possible because that's what is going to be standing the battery on its feet. So what we're doing right now is we are creating short cable loops that is gonna come from the inverter straight to the circuit breakers and then 
um, all the way down to the boss bar. So we have to create the short loops for the battery. So we would have gotten like customized cables for them, but we usually like producing our cables to ensure that we get the right quality, to ensure that we have the right precision in terms of length. We don't have wires lying around. So that at the end of the day, uh, the installation is gonna look very neat and tidy. So right now that we have all the bolts out, the next process is to begin to place in the bus bars to parallel the battery. So it's easy peasy. And like I said, aesthetically pleasing. So you start from the positive end of it, you insert the bus bar in, then you insert the bus bar for the negative. Then you come here again, insert the bus bar for the positive, then the negative. So you can see how fast it is and very convenient for the installers, okay? very straightforward and lovely and then finally so since you have six batteries here what you need is five sets of bus bar to be able to help you do the parallel connections here and then finally the negative end of it so right now that you have all the batteries connected in parallel the next thing to do is to begin to bolt them in place and that's what we're going to do so check this out if all the batteries are like this, my friend, I'm gonna live really very long because it's stress-free. So right now we have all the bus bars bolted into place. So the batteries are connected in parallel. So the moment you turn these batteries on right now, they are all contributing energy together. That's the parallel connection. So the next process, once you have the bus bars bolted into place, is to begin to connect the communication cables. So these are all RS-485 and you have to use the RS-485 port. So the port B, goes into the port A. All right, so when you have all the bus bars connected and you have all the communication cables connected, you need to do a test to be sure that all the batteries are communicating, very important. So what you need to do is first to turn on the batteries all in the on position, every single one of them. We have six connected in parallel here. So when you have done that, you need to turn on the master. So this is the master. This is slave one, slave two, slave three, slave four, and then slave five. So you turn on the master. Then all of them will start turning on one after the other, showing you that indeed that all the batteries are communicating. And then you're gonna have the lights change from green, it's gonna change to red, to blue, and you'll hear that contactor sound. That's a mechanical contactor for each of them is gonna be coming on, so you will hear the sound. So this is an indication that the batteries are communicating and they are all supplying a power outflow from the batteries into the inverter. So you're good, so it's communicating. Set the Bluetooth app and then customize the cables and pretty much, and you're good to go. All right, so we're about to put in the output um, from the inverter to the DB. So this is where we're looking at that it's going to come out. So this is the nearest distribution point for this house. So the power is gonna to have to flow in here from this point. So you have four cables in here, right? Each representing the lines. So this is the blue face, this is the red face, this is the yellow face! And then you have the neutral that works with every one of them, then you have the F cable, so this is gonna be the F cable. So we want to pass this right on this um, POP that you have here that is gonna drop in here over this place as neat as we can as possible, all right? So these cables are 16 mm diameter cables and this is more than sufficient for uh, the load subjection that is gonna happen right on the inverter. Stay close, guys! Folks, it does look like we are done, finally! So we have a fully set up system. Let me introduce you guys to the system for the very first time as a finished system. Right here we have six units of 5.3 kilowatt hour battery. It's a 5K 3XP and these guys, they kick a lot of energy guys. 
Right here is six units, one, two, three, four, five, six. All doing well, connected in the master and slave fashion. So right here we have the automatic changeover, okay? And the power it is set to inverter. So when it doesn't detect power from the inverter, it's gonna switch right back to the grid. Right here we have two units of MCCBs controlling and keeping the batteries on check and ensuring that you don't have a power flow from the batteries straight into the inverter when you don't need it. That's its job to control it, all right? And right here we have the MCCBs controlling the input and output that is coming from the grid, everybody! And right here we have the combiner boxes. Right here is the AC side. You have the AVRs and you have the AC surge. And right here is the DC side of it. You have the combiner boxes, all the surges that you need, the circuit breakers that are controlling the PVs. And right here, it's the monster himself. That's the day, a 12 kilowatt inverter. It needs no introduction. It's a three phase machine and it packs and kicks a lot of energy, guys. It's about 3 p.m. in the afternoon, everybody. Let's see what's coming from the PV and what the PV is bringing in right here. Even with the overcast weather, we're hitting as much as 12 kilowatt. Can you believe that? It's been overcast from back to back and everybody's complaining. And in the midst of all those complaints, we have 12 kilowatt. Can you believe it? This is beautiful, everybody. Thank you so very much. And looks like our job is done here. If you haven't subscribed, always remember, this is how you support this work that we're doing and we are so grateful. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and do not forget to share. See you guys in the next one.